psychologists of Reddit. Have you ever been genuinely scared by a patient before? What's your story? Saw a new client for our first session at my home practice. We seem to click and work together fine. He said he wanted to work through some trauma he'd experienced when he was physically attacked by a previous psychologist. Hearing about terrible psychologists always riles me up so I was immediately on his side. When I talked with my supervisor about the case a week later she asked me his full name, which never happened so I was weirded out immediately. She googled the name then and there and wordlessly handed me her iPad. It was full of news articles about this client and his attacks on psychologists in my local area. I obviously did not see him again, but I was nervous for ages because he knew where I lived. <laughs> Clinical psychologist here. I used to work in a prison and did a parole evaluation for an inmate that was a high-ranking gang member in a national gang. By his account he was the highest ranking in the state. In fact, he was placed in that prison to hold his people accountable and keep the peace. He had a long violent record and was, in my opinion, a genuine psychopath. Part of the eval is discussing the crime and assessing remorse and whatnot. He was so clinical in his description of how he tortured and left this guy to die over an unpaid debt. Live by the sword, die by the sword, was his phraseology for the act like it was nothing. He was also very nonchalant about his ability to take care of his business while inside. I believe him is your he had only spent 18 months of his last 15 years outside of prison. My recommendation was not to parole him is your there were various factors that I gave in, in the and the parole board went with my recommendation. So the part that actually scared me. This was my first parole eval was this guy's ability to affect the world outside. He could have sent someone to my house if he wanted to. I had no doubt about that. More experienced psychologists told me not to worry about it, that he knew the score and wouldn't take it personally. I had a hard to buying it. I was running a long-term offender group a few months later and he was part of it. After the first group I pulled him aside and asked if we were good. He smiled at me and told me not to worry. I did my job and he didn't blame me for writing what I did because it was true. He went on to be a really insightful and active group member. A nine-year-old I used to teach in lockdown special education mistook my assistant's move towards me as aggressive and attempted to kill her with a desk. I wasn't scared for myself. Definitely scared for both the boy. A real sweetheart who just got triggered. And the assistant. Total bitch to me and the kids. Everything turned out okay. I hurried the boy off to his therapist and the assistant quit immediately and we went back to a normalish classroom this year. I'm a therapist. But not a psychologist if that matters. I used to work in a facility for kids and adolescents with pretty intense behavioral issues. Even when a client was aggressive. I was usually able to de-escalate them and I generally didn't feel unsafe. In fact, most of the time I was concerned about their safety during outbursts. With one exception, I had a client that was pretty strong and prone to intense tantruming. This client was acting in a way that was unsafe. Had a plan to seriously hurt another resident I think. So I had to put them on restriction. Within staff eyesight at all times. Their response was to run up to me and attempt to choke me. Luckily the staff got there in time and prevented this kid from seriously hurting me. On another occasion, this same client also took apart their curtain rod in their bedroom and swung it at my head. I dodged in time. Oddly enough, this client and I had a pretty good relationship the other 99% of the time and I generally enjoyed working with theme as here. Once when I was a medical student I was asked to see a patient in the psychiatric unit of the emergency room as here I walked in with my short white coat and clipboard and asked the guy what brought him in today and what was wrong. He looked me dead in the eyes with foamy saliva dribbling from the corner of his mouth and a strange smell in the air and said, the devil told me to kill you and kill myself. 
He was sweaty and his eyes were bloodshot and his wife beater had dark red, brown stains on it. The door was behind him and I wasn't sure I could make it there before something bad happened. No idea if he had a weapon on him Monsieur was afraid of calling loudly for help. I was in the quiet corner of the earth and I felt like I would have had to yell to get attention and I didn't want to startle him Monsieur I stayed there for a half hour and asked him more questions slipped out when he started to look sleepy. A very sweet, mostly blind teenager who was going throughout his first psychotic break and had a love of martial arts. Taekwondo, if I remember correctly, like was really, really, really good at it. He couldn't see and would practice kicks. And at one point, accidentally kicked one of the reinforced shatterproof windows in the quiet room think padded room without the padding. Turns out they were shatter resistant, he destroyed it with that kick. And hash x200b. Why those particular details? Because he would practice his kicks everywhere. Was mostly blind. And the one time he flipped up to practice one and I was walking around the corner. It came literal centimeters from my face. And I felt the impact of it against the air. Like a physical force bashing into my face sweetest kid in the world. He would have been horrified if it had connected, because things would have broken. A lot of things. He also grabbed my arm once in a suddenly firm grasp and asked if I wanted to do taekwondo with him as your no. No I did not. Not a psych but my dad is a retired forensic one. He's got far too many stories but his first ever murder case decades ago as a noob was a rough one. It involved a guy who kept asking this girl out. She made it clear numerous times that she wasn't interested. But the guy wasn't having it and just kept harassing her. Finally, one day he followed her home where he stabbed her parents and the family dog to death. I don't really want to hear about any of his other cases. When I was studying psychology my final year, I had the opportunity to meet with convicted felons. Essentially, I sat down and spoke to a man, in his thirties-ish, who was a sexual offender. He told me he used to marry women and then rape their young daughters. Each was in the range of six to seven years old. I listened to him explain it. It was literally my instructions not to judge them. I had to sign a waiver to not get emotional. So I asked him about the home life of those he abused. Head say that some of the women he married had other children and in one case there was an older sister who was 13, but he would never ever touch her. Head drop her off at school, where he told me he was never into any of the children he saw, and take her to practice in friend's house. And while she was gone, head go back and rape her six-year-old sister. He told me that it really isnt always about being attracted to prepubescent girls. It's about the dominance and power that come with having sex with the monsieur he's being rehabilitated now though. Weird part was that I wasn't sure if he was acting remorseful. BC if he was, he is amazing at it. He was just very open to my questions and expressed regret and I almost believed him as here. However when I met a man who was convicted of child porn, his I feel terrible s were transparent and so full of shit it was disgusting. My professors warned me about manipulation. So that was easy to catch on to. But with the previous guy, he was either an impeccable liar and manipulator, or he genuinely wanted to get better, crazy. Edit. Grammar mistake. Clarity. <laughs> Clinical psychologist in training here. I've never been afraid, but my friend had a client once who made her extremely uncomfortable without revealing any information that could break confidentiality. I will say that he had issues with masturbating too much, and not doing much else, and at one point asked my friend if they could watch porn together in the next session so he could show her what he does. At another time, he talked about his masturbation habits while touching his dick throughout his pants a bit totally inappropriate behavior, obviously. This client had lots of other issues, but when these things came up, 
Her supervisor took her off the case because it wasn't suitable for training and my friend didn't feel safe. A few people had unpredictable anger and outbursts that could be scary at times. And once a husband brought a gun to a couple's therapy session and threatened to kill himself wife. Luckily we were able to calm the situation down. But things like that can end badly. And you always have to be aware of that possibility when emotions run high. Not me but a friend. Who is the patient? Has what's described as treatment-resistant psychosis. She's not a scary person at all. In fact, she's really sweet and caring. But she hears voices that tell her that her parents and little brother will be raped and tortured. If she doesn't follow what they say. Sometimes the voices convince her that staff members at the psychiatric intensive care unit she's on are working for the government and trying to run experiments on her and put bugs under her skin. So her voices will tell her to attack staff members. Not super often, but it happens. Whenever it does, she feels terrible afterwards and will cry for hours on end and beg for forgiveness. One of her voices also makes her do her ritual, in which she strips down completely naked and sometimes eats her own shit. She herself is not a scary person. Psychosis itself is such a scary and heartbreaking illness because she's not a violent person and has tons of compassion and empathy for others. Psychotic does not equal psycho or sociopath. My brother-in-law is low-functioning autistic and blind. At one point his care provider who had worked with him for years and knew him quite well got into a very dangerous situation with him this year she had worked with him since he was smaller and had become experienced at interacting safely when he would become angry and aggressive. They had found a good balance of medication for him and she let her guard down. This time though, he was now 20 years old and 6 foot tall. In a split second, he attacked her, jumping up from the couch directly across from her chair. He was very strong and viciously aggressive. I have found myself in tough situations with him and I'm 6 feet 4 inches 225 pounds. After receiving quite a few blows from his hands, hair torn out and bites on her arms and hands, she was able to push away across the ground and get behind the couch he had been sitting on. She quickly slid the couch into a corner so that he wouldn't have a way around it easily, and she hid herself behind it and tried to be very quiet. He searched that corner of the room for over an hour following the front and side edges of the couch with his hands, back and forth pacing until he eventually lost interest and went to play with some toys off in the corner of the room as year she got out of the corner and ran for her door just as her assistant was coming to remind her that she had gone over the allotted time. My Bill is an amazing guy and I've had some awesome experiences with him over the years. But the idea of being hunted by sound like that is pretty freaky. Not a psychologist but I work at a psych hospital. Your first experience with a patient attempting to seriously injure or kill you is always frightening. But most of the time, at least at my workplace, it's more heartbreaking than scary.